Hey guys, welcome and thank you for participating in the 2015 Daytona Beach Bacon Beatdown. And to many of you, welcome back. You've been with us several years. We always appreciate your support. We're gonna have a blast this year. We wanna make sure that you guys understand the workouts as best you can before you get there. Your judges will also be very well educated. So you guys will be getting plenty of descriptions uh, and, and uh, standards handed out to you. Make sure everybody is, is getting judged fairly. Have a good time. Make sure to be nice to me on Facebook. All right, so this is for stage one on Friday. We're gonna go over the little piglets and the piglets. This is for the workout deep fried. We're gonna start this workout out with 60 lateral hops over a parallel. This parallel is 13 inches high. The standard for the lateral hops is the athlete must start with both feet on one side of the parallel, jump all the way over, both feet landing on the other side, and then repeat. Both feet must leave at the same time, back and forth, counts as one rep. Stepping over the parallel will not be allowed, that is a no rep. Hopping over one foot at a time is also not allowed. That will be a no rep. Movement number two, 30 step ups onto a 20 inch box. For the little piglets and piglets, this athlete can step up onto the box. They can climb up onto the box using their hands or they can jump onto the box. No matter which method they choose, the athlete must reach full extension at the top. Movement number three is 60 standing lunges to be completed 30 on the right leg and then 30 on the left. The athlete will start with both feet together, step out with the right foot, touch the knee to the ground, then back to the start. Once the athlete has completed 30 reps on the right leg, then they'll switch and go 30 reps on the left leg, making sure that knee touches down every time and the feet return back to start. The next movement is 30 burpees. The athlete will start in a standing position, complete a burpee with their chest and torso touching the ground, then return back to a fully upright position, hands over the head. We must see the ears in front of the arms. The final movement in this workout is 60 ab mat sit-ups. The standard for this, athletes can choose either a butter, butterfly position or a standard position. To start the movement, the athlete must lay down, touch their hands on the ground, sit up, touch their hands on the ground in front of their toes. If the athlete chooses the butterfly position, the same standards apply. Hands must touch above the head and then on the ground in front of the toes. All right, now we'll be demonstrating the movements for the teen scale division, that is teenager scale division, and beginners. They are the same. We're gonna start with 60 thick rope jumps. The standard on the thick rope jump is the rope must pass underneath your feet and you must complete the movement. If an athlete lands on the rope, the rep will not count. For the teenager scale division, the box jumps will be 20 inches for both male and female. For the beginner's division, box jumps will be 20 inches for both male and female. Athletes can either step up onto the box at the top. The hip must reach full extension. Athletes may also jump onto the box. Again, at the top, the hip must reach full extension. Athletes may not use their hands when getting to the top of the box. Movement number three is 60 standing lunges to be completed 30 on the right leg and then 30 on the left. The athlete will start with both feet together, step out with the right foot, touch the knee to the ground, then back to the start. Once the athlete has completed 30 reps on the right leg, then they'll switch and go 30 reps on the left leg, making sure that knee touches down every time and the feet return back to start. The next movement is the alternating single leg burpees. The athlete must raise one foot off the ground, complete a burpee, chest must touch the ground without that foot ever touching the ground. For the ring rows, the judge will assist the athlete in setting the height of the ring. The height of the ring will be bottom of the ring touching the hip bone. The standard for the ring row, the athlete's feet must be always inside the rig. Athlete must extend the arms all the way. At the top of the movement, the knuckles must touch the chest. The athlete's hips 
must stay inside the uprights the entire time. From the bottom of the movement to the top of the movement, the hips must stay inside the uprights. If the hips come outside of the uprights, that would be a no rep. The athlete can kip these or butterfly. Just make sure the arms reach full extension and the knuckles touch the chest. For the teenage RX division, this division is gonna start with 60 double unders. The standard on the double under is a pretty standard double under. The athlete must jump, the rope must pass underneath the feet twice for the rep to count. Athletes can either step up onto the box at the top, the hip must reach full extension. Athletes may also jump onto the box. Again, at the top, the hip must reach full extension. Athletes may not use their hands when getting to the top of the box. Movement number three is 60 standing lunges to be completed 30 on the right leg and then 30 on the left. The athlete will start with both feet together, step out with the right foot, touch the knee to the ground, then back to the start. Once the athlete has completed 30 reps on the right leg, then they'll switch and go 30 reps on the left leg, making sure that knee touches down every time and the feet return back to start. The next movement is the alternating single leg burpees. The athlete must raise one foot off the ground, complete a burpee, chest must touch the ground without that foot ever touching the ground. And the final movement for the Teenage RX division is 60 pull-ups. So the athlete will jump or step up to the bar. There will be boxes provided. The arms must reach full extension at the bottom of the movement. At the top, the chin must break the vertical plane of the bar. The athlete can kip these or butterfly. Stage number two for Friday competitors, the pig toss. This is for the little piglets and the piglets. This is three minutes for a max distance forward slam ball toss. The athlete will start on the start line when the time says go. They will run to their ball, pick it up, throw it forward any way they like. Underhand, overhand, any way they like. The athletes will have three minutes of a max distance forward slam ball toss. The athletes will toss the ball from one side of the field to the other and then return. Every 20 feet counts as a point. If the athlete travels forward while they're touching the ball, they will be asked to go back to their original position. The athlete may not travel forward while they're touching the ball. For the teenager scaled, teenager RX, beginners and beginner teams, they'll be com completing a max deadlift. For teenager scaled, teenager RX, and beginner individual, they will have four minutes to find a one rep max deadlift. The athlete will agree on a weight with their judge before completing the lift. Once that lift is complete, the judge will mark it as a good rep. Do not drop the bar until your judge has said good rep. The standard on the deadlift is the athlete must start with the barbell on the ground. They must reach full extension at the top of the lift and show control before setting the bar down. They can drop it from the top position. If the athlete does not reach full extension at the top by either not extending the knees or not extending at the hips, that will be a no rep. For the beginner team division, each athlete will have two minutes to find a one rep max. At the end of that two minutes, they will have two minutes to unload the barbell back to where the plate started. Air squats onto the med ball. The athlete will start with the hips extended. At the bottom of the squat, their butt must touch the ball. At the top of the squat, the hips must reach full extension again. If the athlete's butt does not touch the ball, that is a no rep. If the athlete does not reach full extension at the top in the hips and knees, that is a no rep. For little piglets, hand release push-ups. The hand release push-up, the athlete will start in the plank position with the hands and toes on the ground. Athlete must lay all the way down on the ground, pick the hands up, then push back up to the locked out plank position. The athlete can worm or complete a strict push-up. For the hand cleans, the athlete must reach a full locked out hang position before beginning the movement. They can complete a hang power clean or a hang squat clean. During the hang clean, if the athlete chooses to use a hang power clean, the elbows must travel forward of the bar in the front rack position every time for the rep to count. If the elbows do not travel forward of the bar, that is a no rep. 
The shoulder to overhead must start in the front rack position. The athlete can choose a strict press, push press, push jerk, or split jerk to get the barbell overhead. Elbows must reach full extension. The athlete must show the ears in front of the arm for the rep to count. Also, both feet must be back in the start position. Be sure if you choose a split jerk that your feet return to the start position while your elbows are in the locked out position before you return to the front rack. If the athlete chooses to use a push jerk, be sure that the knees, hips, and elbows are locked out with the ear showing in front of the arm. For the hang snatch, the bar will start out in the hang position, which is a fully locked out deadlift. Once the athlete has reached that position, they may begin the hang snatches. This movement is gonna start in the hang position and end overhead in a fully locked out position. The bar must travel in one smooth upward motion. It cannot stop at or in, in between the shoulders and the head. The athlete may choose to use a hang power snatch or a hang squat snatch for this movement. At the top of the snatch, make sure the knees, hips, and elbows are locked out and showing control before the athlete returns to the hang position.